Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tip of the Iceberg podcast, brought to you as always by InsideThePenguins.com, a proud affiliate of the Hockey News. I'm your host, Nick Berlansky, joined as always by Nick Horwat, and we have a great show for you guys today. It's always fun when we get to celebrate the captain, number 87, Sidney Crosby, and he certainly is worth celebrating today, securing his most significant milestone yet. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes, but still to come later in this episode, Brian Russ staying red hot at Madison Square Garden. Is there a goalie controversy brewing in the city of Pittsburgh once again? And if we get to it, man, that schedule looking down the remaining reindeer of the season is certainly a gauntlet. But before we get into that, Horwat, the Penguins, they're 3-0-2 in their last five games, and all of a sudden... They're five points out of a playoff spot once again. The cards are falling in their favor to keep them at least within, I would say, striking distance, but I think they're within striking distance of being within striking distance. But the games that they have left, the games that they have in hand over the Philadelphia Flyers, it's certainly still interesting, isn't it? It's certainly interesting. <clears throat> it's, uh, I would say things are starting to fall their way. Like you said, the cards are falling in their favor. They're starting to play some really good hockey. I mean, sure, they blew the four-goal lead to Colorado. That would have been a huge win to carry for themselves an extra two points, or an extra point, I should say, because they did, like like you mentioned, they were 3-0-2. They did manage a standings point out of that game. You wanted that second one. You were playing like you deserved the second one until you weren't. Um, And what do they do from there? Are they take on Dallas or that was Dallas Stars was before, mm -hmm. but they move on to there's those back-to-back -back games against home and home against the Columbus Blue Jackets. You get points in both of those. Again, you probably deserved or at least should have gotten uh, the second one in the shootout loss, but that's, that's kind of, that's what we thought was the definition of Penguins hockey this year, right? Just it is. Losing to the, yeah. It, but here they are beating the New York Rangers who could, very well battle for the president's trophy this year. Uh, man, it's, I, I don't know what to make of this team. Truthfully, it's um, going to be wild. I'd say they are because of the, they suddenly have a couple of games in hands on the right teams. You know, it's, I, I would say they're within striking distance. I know you're giving them that extra step out. I would say it's a lot. It might be a lot closer than we think, uh, especially considering every team they're fighting with, they probably have a match coming up against. Yeah. And it's all Metro teams. The, the Atlantic is essentially decided the Tampa Bay lightning are in the second uh, wildcard spot with 89 points, seven points up of the next wildcard team. I think the Atlantic is pretty set in stone. The Red Wings may still have a fight, but they have to really get off of whatever they've been doing. It's, it's not, it's, it's the battle of, who can lose less yeah. in the East, but it seems like the Penguins might be right back in that fight. Yeah, it's interesting too, because the Penguins have been one of the hardest teams to predict. That's why I'm not saying, hey, they're, they're, they're within striking distance because they've been at that five-point mark a couple times and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden just falling off the face of the earth. But, you know, you have to give them credit where credit is due. Yes, they get three of four standings points against Columbus, and they probably should have gotten that fourth. But they've beaten two of the best teams in hockey in the past week. You have that 4-1 to one win over the Carolina Hurricanes in a very emotional night for Jake Gensel returning to Pittsburgh. And then you have that win in New York, your first win in nine road games, or I should say in 10 road games. They lost their previous nine away from home. They get that win. That's a huge confidence boost for them going forward. And not to mention that this is all backstopped by Sidney Crosby. And that's where I think we should head next with this. Sidney Crosby makes history tying the great one. Wayne Gretzky with 19 point per game seasons. He clinched it with a three point performance at the world's most famous arena against the New York Rangers, two goals and one assist in the five to two victory over the Broadway blue shirts. He has fifth or 13 points in his last five games. He has just been the pillar of consistency. Horwat. There's no other, there's no other way of putting it. Consistency uh, has been off the charts throughout his whole career. And this, these last five games has just been dominant. I mean, you got four points. Again, it was the blow. It was the comeback loss to the Colorado Avalanche, but he was he contributed on each of those four goals that the Penguins had. 
he put up four points in that game, three against the Hurricanes, and then two against the in the first game of the against the Blue Jackets, one in the next, and then three against arguably the one of the best teams in the league. He is turning it on. It's a little late, but he's turning it on <clears throat> at the right moments for the big games. I mean, four against Colorado, they just couldn't hold on. Three against the Rangers, they pulled through in battle. Three against the Carolina Hurricanes. Most likely because he wanted to one up Jake Gensel, but hey, so be it. It's still something to hang your hat on. He's not letting this team die. He's not letting this team, at bare minimum, go out without a fight. It might ruin their drafts positioning, but so be it. I don't think anyone's going to fault Sidney Crosby for want, wanting to try everything he can. Uh, because, like we said, the playoffs are within view, they can see that line. And if Crosby has anything to do about it, they're going to at least shoot for it. And Mm -hmm. you can't bet against Crosby. How many times do people have to say that? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. And this is the only thing I'm going to say about the draft stock. And and Josh Joey had a nice write-up at The Athletic about why the Penguins aren't going to tank. They're not going to do it and why it's just not in their nature. So you can go check that out for more extended thoughts. But the one thing I'm thinking is, you know, they're not going to tank because the last time the Penguins had a top 10 pick, or at least I'm not rooting for them to tank because the last time they had a top 10 pick, it was Derek Pouliot. So yeah, at the end of the day, I'd rather watch winning hockey. And that's what Sidney Crosby's brought. And it's at these moments too. And I mentioned it at the top of the show. I think this is his most significant milestone because, you know, a lot of people, I think he was what the 37th or what 77th or whatever it was, whoever reached a thousand points reaching 500 goals is a big milestone for every NHLer. but tying Wayne Gretzky in a statistical category that is all about consistent greatness. That is what Sidney Crosby has been. That is the best way to describe what he has been for the last two decades is consistently great. And this stat perfectly encapsulates it. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. There's seasons where he only played 22 games. But yes, when he played those 22 games, those were his best seasons. And whenever Mm -hmm. that argument comes up, it makes me look back and it makes me think about how crazy his stats would be if he didn't miss that time. I mean, you look at what Connor McDavid is doing right now. It is something special, but you have to remember that those injury riddled seasons for Crosby were in his prime, his age 20 season, his age 23 season and his age 24 seasons were all cut in half or more by injuries. There was one year that he only played in 22 games of 82 possible. And that's because of the concussions in his age 23 and 24 and the high ankle sprain that he suffered in his third season at age 20. And then you look at his age 25 season and it's cut short for the lockout. Yeah. He goes off the penguins end up being the one seed in the Eastern conference, but he had 231 points in 152 games over those four seasons. That's 1.5 points per game so if you think about what that would be if he were to stay on that pace and again if ifs and buts were fifths or if ifs were fifths we'd all be drunk but he missed out on somewhere around 270 points do you know where that would put him as of right now or what uh, i mean well within the top 10 i know he's what, like oh. five, five points out of the top 10 obviously and clearly we all know the other records he's three away from a thousand assists a handful away from 600 goals he'll hit that one next year um, I, w- I want to know where it puts him in Penguins history too. I think that's the question of where does he, where does Talk. it match up to le- passes Lemieux? It passes it's- Lemieux. It passes Lemieux. It passes everybody except Wayne Gretzky, Yarmir Yager, and Mark Messier. It is one point. If he were to stay on that pace and just have those four seasons back, one point above Gordy Howe for fourth all time. And he would be at around, you know, like I said, he, he Gordy Howe, he's up over 1800 there. He'd be a shoe in to catch Yager at number two overall. And, you, and, and I think that's where he belongs. But the injuries, again, there's a lot of those stories in hockey history. Yeah. The same thing with Mario Lemieux, the same thing with a guy like Bobby Orr, whose careers were cut short or severely impacted by injuries, off ice issues, health issues, what have you. But it's just another one of those ifs in hockey history where you look at Crosby's greatness and the numbers on the paper don't tell the entire story, but that's why I love this stat of points per game. That means anytime he has been available, he has just been consistently great. And that's what I think Crosby has been all about. Yeah. It's because you're able to add on, just stuff those, those extra numbers. And you said that only includes those injury years, right? Just those four. Just those four. It doesn't include the COVID stuff. Yeah. It doesn't include uh, a 
a season cut short. I mean, you know, later in his career, but it doesn't include a season cut short uh, because of the shortened ending because of COVID or the, the second season after where it was the con- the, the jumbled mess of yeah. the East Division that we were just discussing before we recorded here. Um, it doesn't include those even. And who knows what those numbers can be. And I think it's quite impressive regardless of where he finishes now. It's He's going to finish top 10 with those with those sidetracks, with those mm-hmm. obstacles. I mean, there's a reason why people continue to discuss him as a top five player of all time, period. And mm-hmm. he's showing it every day. And to think he still has at least a year left on a contract. Who knows what he signs this summer Yeah, uh, to wrap up his career in Pittsburgh. I don't think... That conversation should slowly be fading away, by the way, that whole idea of him leaving, uh, regardless of what this team does. We'll see what's in the water up in Canada, but I'm sure they won't let that go so easily until that contract is signed with a full no movement clause. Mm -hmm. What's next for Crosby milestone watch, which has basically been his career over the last couple of years, three assists from 1000 assists in his career, 13 goals away from 600 and six points from passing Phil Esposito for 10th all time in hockey history in, in points. And that's, again, these are all great milestones. These are all huge milestones. These are all putting Crosby where he belongs in the upper echelon of the record books. But like I mentioned, tying Wayne Gretzky for the most point per game seasons of all time. That to me is his most significant personal milestone yet. Yeah. The, the cups are obviously above that. The, you know, gold medals or the golden goal is above that. The world yeah. hockey MVP is something, but, this is his best personal milestone, and I think the most significant personal milestone he's ever achieved. It it's with an empty netter, but guess what? It's off of a block shot where he he makes the defensive play in a big game for the Penguins because even though you know it, it looks bleak, he still believes, his team still believes, and that's what Sidney Crosby's gonna do late in the hockey game. He's gonna block the shot, he's gonna take the puck, and he's gonna put away the Broadway blue shirts, the best team in hockey on a Monday night. And that's Sidney Crosby for you. So congratulations to Sidney Crosby. He continues to amaze. He continues to rewrite the history books in his name. And I'm excited to see what's up next for the obvious kid that is turned into a superstar, a megastar, and a Mount Rushmore in hockey. Let's talk about his line mate because he's also not just along for the ride, but also having a really, really good last month. Let's talk a little bit about Brian Rust right after this break. Welcome back to the Tip of the Iceberg podcast brought to you as always by InsideThePenguins.com. Always great when we get to start off talking about Sidney Crosby's greatness. I could talk about that until the cows come home. And if you want to talk more about that, I will be on our YouTube channel live later today around 4 p.m. for our first weekly recap live with Tip of the Iceberg instead of uh, the game recaps because that got to be a lot to keep up with. We're going to do a live show, live stream on YouTube every Tuesday around 4 p.m., recapping the week that was, previewing the week that's coming up, and answering all of your questions. So come join me live. Sometimes we'll have Horwood on. Sometimes we might try to get some guests on. But this is something we're going to try to be consistent with every single Tuesday afternoon. But let's talk a little bit about Brian Rust. The role of Penguin's best winger was vacated by Jake Gensel whenever he was injured and then subsequently dealt to the Carolina Hurricanes, and he's having a great time down in Carolina, what have you, whatever. Rust wasted no time submitting his name for that vacant position, has he? Not at all. It helped that he was kind of also already there. It yes. just um, became He's already number cemented. two. Yeah, he was already the backup option, it felt. But it just helps that he has cemented that you know, that partnership, that, that, uh, that battery that is going to kind of be the easy top line one two punch for the penguins at least for the uh, for for this season we'll see what the offseason brings in terms of changes lineup moves and other factors but you know uh Josh Yoey second mention here he keeps saying that Brian Rust isn't fully 100% healthy and that's it, it that's very possible he's been, it's been hurt a couple times this year but he sure doesn't seem it. He sure doesn't look at it on paper, at least. Those numbers are 
is outstanding. I think you had him hitting 30 goals at the beginning of the season for a while. It looked like that might not happen by way of those injuries or of a slow start. I mean, Rust wasn't super proud of his uh, of last season, and now he's coming in this year, and you know, all of a sudden, shooting the lights out. This is uh, – I don't know if something changed. and if, if he is injured, that's – impossible to tell that he's playing out of his mind and well deserving of that top role i think for a long time you know i was at least last season was i may have been pretty critical of putting him on the second line with malkin i mean that's still not you know a demotion by any stretch of the word but um clearly he's earned that top role this year Mm -hmm. and you mentioned it you you can't tell by based on his his performance as of late now since gensel left the lineup which gensel's last game was on Valentine's Day against the Florida Panthers, but since he left the lineup, injured and then gone, Brian Rust has stepped up in an amazing fashion. 18 points in 17 games, 12 of those 18 points being goals, and obviously you look at what he's currently doing on his five-game point streak, five goals and two assists, and closing in on a career high in goals, one away from tying it at 27. I'm hoping he gets to 30 so I can take my victory lap here on on calling his first 30-goal season, but I mean, his performance has just been astounding, and I about a week or, or so ago, I, I said that he's going to step into that Gensel role. He is the top candidate to be the Penguins' next Jake Gensel. And listen, I completely understand the fact that when it comes to the playmaking side of things, Brian Rust is no slouch. Just look at the assist he had on Saturday to Drew O'Connor's goal. A beautiful cross-ice pass and a perfect position. And Drew O'Connor, for what it's worth, has been a diamond in the rough this season. We've yeah. talked about him a bunch, but we can't talk about his season enough. But Brian Rust's playmaking might not be quite on par with Jake Gensel's because Jake Gensel is what we would consider elite. I, I think elite needs to be tossed around a lot less often, but I do believe that Jake Gensel deserves the elite tag when it comes to his all around game. Brian Rust is a electric goal scorer. He has that playmaking ability, but I think the goal scoring is really where he's going to step into that Jake Gensel role. And that's why I see him as being the next Jake Gensel for the Penguins. And you're seeing him show it, especially if he's injured right now and he's putting on 12 goals in 18 games while dealing with an injury while the Penguins have their backs up against the wall. I think that is just making it even more impressive what he's been able to do as of late. And he could have scored two more yesterday. Igor Shosturkin made some, you know, gritting his teeth by the skin of his teeth saves on Brian Rust, who was just about ready to put in a hat trick or, or maybe four goals last night. I don't know what it is about the Penguins. They seem to own that guy, by the way. Just side note. Uh, well, like, he's a mental midget, so that's that's part of it. Yeah, because the Penguins played the Rangers twice earlier in the season against Jonathan Quick both times, uh, who also, despite his age, no slouch. He just reached that uh, American... Mm-hmm. All-time wins. Uh, but... There's something about something about Igor Shosturkin and the Penguins that uh, every time we see him play, I really genuinely am curious as to how he is rated so highly in terms of like the goaltending ranks. Because yeah. listen, the Penguins aren't a great team right now. They make him look like Swiss cheese all the time, all the mm-hmm. time. He almost got outplayed by Louis Domingue. Let's not forget that. Yes, it was very close to being a five-game series, Louis Domingue over. Igor Shosturkin, and listen, he's having a bad year this year. He's having a down year this year, but that was him in his prime. That was him coming off of a Vezina Trophy season, and he still almost lost to Louis Domingue and the Penguins. Now, again, head-to-head, it's not like goaltenders shoot on each other, but still, um, that Penguins team was much better than this one. But yeah, yeah, Rust against against them. Yeah, it's Rust has been all over the ice. He was all over the ice last night. He does everything for this team and always Mm -hmm. has. Let's not forget those penalty-killing numbers are in there. The power play for as dead in the water as the power play has been every time i hear them say in recent in recent games that the power play is 31st in the league i go oh yeah i haven't looked at those numbers in so long because you just know they're there but not even that it's just i haven't had the energy to care about the power play anymore i mean i don't think they have either every time i see a, a power play update i'm like I, all right cool that doesn't mean anything anymore it's that's just how non non-needed that that power play has been Mm -hmm. but brian rust he's killing penalties he is on that power play unit so he's getting that extra ice time and then on five on five he's still putting in all the work and he's if if guys like malkin on the tank had left when they did brian rust would very easily be wearing a letter on his jersey too he's one of those locker room guys that um 
could lead a team on his own. Let's say something happens and let's let's say Canada gets their wish and Sidney Crosby does leave in the near future. If Brian Rust is still around, I'm not kidding. He could be captain of this team for the longevity that he's been here, for the leadership that he shows, and for how much he is that locker room guy. He is that sort of pedigree guy for this team. Yeah, I I have I don't have enough, you know, solid things to say about Brian Russ and what he's been able to do. And I think he's been the unsung hero for a long time. Now, I know that's hard to say because he has been he has been placed on a pedestal and warranted in Pittsburgh because of the Stanley Cup runs and what he was able to do. You know, Mr. Game 7 for the Penguins or Mr. Elimination Game, I believe, is what everybody called him for the Penguins. He, he was a playoff performer, maybe not to the levels of, of the superstars, but he was that second wave star for the Penguins that you could rely on. And like you mentioned, he's a five-tool athlete. He, he plays the penalty kill. He plays the power play. He plays at five on five he's physical he's fast he's everything Mike Sullivan wants in a player and I think you're seeing Drew O'Connor become that which is making me a little bit more excited like the second coming of a Brian Rust which yeah. is fantastic you know college hockey product turning into uh, you know starting out as a bottom six guy with a low ceiling when it comes to scoring and then just bursting through that in a big way so I think the Penguins are in a good spot with with Brian Rust and also with Drew O'Connor you know some some auxiliary love there for O'Connor in this segment but I think the Penguins have a couple of really solid wingers to look, you know, to look towards next season and and know that they have them and maybe even not have to look towards next season because like we mentioned, the most unpredictable team in hockey this year is the Penguins. They're 5 points out of a playoff spot. The East is a crapshoot. Who knows how these next 2 weeks are going to go? Again, I'm pessimistic about it, which I'm not pessimistic about much, but seeing how they've performed, that's why I'm pessimistic about it, but if they do it, you know, color me shocked, but I'm all in for playoff hockey. I don't care where they finish. I don't care who they have to play. I'm all in for a playoff series in 2024. And those who aren't, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I question your fandom. I question your fandom a little bit. If you would rather have the 10th overall pick or the ninth overall pick than a playoff series. Now, if they lose in four games, I get it's tough to swallow, but playoff hockey is, is a different yeah. animal. And I also think that you look at what happened last year, maybe Alex Nedeljkovic, as we'll talk about in a couple minutes, maybe he's this year's Alex Lyon to get the Penguins in as the Florida Panthers. You know, that's a lot of stuff we can talk about in the future. And obviously the Nedeljkovic stuff we're going to talk about right now. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, goalie controversy in Pittsburgh, eh? You don't say. It's like deja vu all over again. We'll talk about that after the break. Welcome back to the tip of the iceberg brought to you as always by inside the Penguins. You know, I mentioned a five tool player before we continue with this episode. I got to give props because the last time we were together, Horwat, it was opening day. I had all the hope in the world. You called me a hopeless romantic in so many words. The Pirates are five and oh, and the best team in the National League. What do you have to say now? The Badlin Buckos <laughs> undefeated through five games in the 2023 season first time 2024 i should say yep. first time since 1983 that they've been five and oh crazy start for the buckos <laughs> the april buckos man that's <laughs> hey one and oh in april undefeated in march you can't take it away from us ah yes, there <laughs> it is that's that's a good that's a good number um what do i have to say about the pirates other than honestly i've the only game i saw was the opener and that was because it was on the screens before the penguin game uh I keep seeing the numbers roll in. They look to be winning and playing pretty good. Uh, <laughs> it's I got nothing more to say because I haven't seen too much, really. Yeah. I, I still do need to, honestly, once this, once this hockey season is over, the Penguins have been driving me nuts mm -hmm. uh, with losing and then winning and then losing more. Mm -hmm. But, uh, hey, I'm, I am excited to win or lose. Watch some baseball this summer. And there you if, go. If O'Neill Cruz can stay healthy, that'll be even more fun because I don't think I've actually seen him play yet in person. <laughs> uh, and I need to do that. So I'm yeah. excited. Well, the good thing about baseball is there's 157 more of those games. So an 81 and 81 of them I'm going at, to, at PNC Park. And I know I'm going to Denver this summer to at least uh, visit some family and also see the Pirates play the Rockies. So O'Neill Cruz be fun. in Denver. Uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. A couple cruise missiles on the way up there with the high altitude. But it's also the same week as the Stanley Cup final week. Obviously, I'm already counting the Penguins out. Uh, uh, that's a preseason pick. You got to you got to roll with them. 
I know. Unless the Colorado Avalanche are still Ooh. alive. And also, I already discussed with my family, if the Penguins are somehow still miraculously in it, we're canceling that plan because that's a very good reason to cancel. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And if they're still in it, part of the reason might be because of Alex Nedeljkovic. I mean, he has taken over the net, like Jim Craig taking over the net for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He started the last five games, the longest stretch of his first season with the Penguins. He wasn't supposed to start last night, but it was a back-to-back. So the only reason Tristan Jari was getting in is because it was a back-to-back. Otherwise, it was probably going to be Alex Nedeljkovic anyway. Now, Jari out due to illness. They had the e-bug sitting there yesterday. A whole other pork and broccoli situation was brewing, but fortunately it didn't get to that point. But five straight starts for Alex Nedeljkovic and a very pivotal point of the season because the Penguins, whether the fans believe it or not, the Penguins are still in it and they believe that they still have a chance at the playoffs. And Alex Nedeljkovic is the guy that Mike Sullivan was rolling with. Is there something bigger to draw from this, or is it just simply Sully's riding the hot hand? Um, I believe it's mostly just uh, Sullivan riding the hot hand. He said so as much, too, and pretty much uh, in so many words, saying uh, that they have the schedule sort of lined up for them, so they kind of know well ahead of time who's going in when, but it's always subject to change thanks to performances. Uh, and that's exactly what the Penguins have been doing. That's exactly what they've been seeing from Nadelkovich is just straight up better play, just straight up better than Jari right now. I'm sure we're going to get into the numbers, so I don't read them off the top right now, but even in the eye test, just Nadelkovich has looked far superior at this, at this point in time. Um, it, heading into the year, there was genuine questions on both goalies because they both kind of needed that rebound season. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for the, for what it's worth, they both played really well. There were parts of the season where the goaltending was the only good thing going for the Penguins. It was the only reason why they were winning a handful of games here and there. Why were they were still in the playoff race? And now at this point, it and you know them both took a dip for a while there, uh, and then at least one of them, Alex Adelkovich, has turned it on and is turning it on again a little late, but the right time, albeit a little late. Yeah, you mentioned that he, he's been red hot, at least in his five starts here. 3 0 and 2 in his last five, a 921 save percentage and 2.4 goals against average. But even if you look back further, there's always been the narrative, and I've always talked about the narrative of Tristan Jari, once New Year's happens, just turns into a pumpkin. Now, I thought he was fending that off. He had a couple of bad games to start the year, and then he had a little bit of an u- uptick in his performance. But when you look at this point, since January 1st, Tristan Jari has played in 26 games has an 813 and 3 record, an 891 save percentage and a 2.92 goals against average. Just again, disappointing when you look at the numbers in the eye test. I think when you look at it, you know, overall has been disappointing as well and you look at Nadelkovic and his numbers from January 1st aren't that impressive, but you look at what he's done recently and that's what's, you know, turned things on, but even his record since January 1st in 19 games played, he's 7-4 four and 4. So while, yes, technically a losing record if you, you add the two, but 7-4-4, four, and four, he's collecting points. He's, he's getting points in more games than he isn't. Whereas you look at Tristan Jari and, and the Penguins are coming away with zeros, with goose eggs in those games. And it's not all on Tristan Jari. We've talked about it copious amounts of time. The defense is a large issue that this team needs to address in the offseason. But I think it's interesting that you get to this point of the season and it's Alex Nadelkovich's net. I think it's interesting that they have... At this point where a lot of people are saying they should, you know, tank, they should you know, look towards next season, they should try to get work where work is needed. They go with Alex Nadelkovich, and I think there's part of me that believes that, hey, yes, it's riding the hot hand, but part of it has to also be Kyle Duba saying there's got to be some changes this summer. Some people are going to get uncomfortable with the changes that he makes this summer. Tristan Jari might not be as bulletproof as we once believed. And we talked about it last Tuesday. And I said, it feels like they're set with their goaltending situation that they bring back Nadelkovic. But it feels like the, the talk about Yoel Blomqvist's season is starting to rise more and more as wilkes Bear starts to get closer and closer to the playoffs. And that talk about Alex Nadelkovic being a bona fide starting or backup or 1B goaltender, it's starting to get louder and louder. And him getting all these starts again. Am I a prisoner of the moment? Potentially. But I don't think Tristan Jari's is as bulletproof as once thought. 
I don't think that's the reason he's not starting. I think it is simply riding the hot hand. But I do think there's a little part of me that's thinking, man, if Nadelkovich shows out and Nadelkovich gets them into the playoffs, again, this is far looking into the future. But if Alex Nadelkovich is their primary goaltender and gets them into the playoffs playing six of the last eight games here, there has to be a serious question of, do they move on from Jari and do they bring Blomqvist up and try to re-sign Nadelkovic? Now, I, I think that is a big if. If is doing a lot of heavy lifting in that statement and doing a lot of heavy lifting in that scenario. But again, I have been of the belief that, hey, he's performed well enough in front of a bad defense this season to make me more comfortable. But the last couple of weeks, his per Jari's performance matched with Nadelkovic coming up, matched with Blomqvist coming up, matched with the fact that the Penguins just simply need to try something new. Man, the bulletproof vest is off, and I'm not exactly sure what I think of this goaltending situation at this current moment. Yeah, that's totally fair. It's I mentioned this to you before, that the reason that they traded Magnus Helberg for someone that won't reach the NHL anytime soon is because they have all kinds of faith in Joel Blomquist for the rest of this season as yeah. the new solid third string goalie. They're going to have faith in, their, in Jari Nadelkovic as they should as the starters for now. Uh, but let's say one of them went down with an injury. Joel Blomquist is the next man up to be the backup in that situation. And depending on, you know, knock on wood, an injury that I'm kind of creating in my head, uh, he would be the backup and then have to come in for starts. He would have to take time in the NHL. They that that's that safety net being gone essentially means they're ready for him to make that jump next season. And they're ready for him to battle for that. Cal Dubas said as much with uh I believe that was with Mark Madden that he said it and not Josh gets off. It was one of those two for sure. And he said that he expects a ton of these young prospects, including guys like Sam Poole and uh Ponomarev and a few other names to battle for spots. Joel Blomquist's name was right among that list. Mm -hmm. And that's saying something considering they locked up Jari for five years, quote unquote, locked up Jari for five years. That Nadelkovic took a one year show me deal and the Penguins will have first crack at re signing him if they'd like to. Uh, if it comes down to it, it, I could see Jari and Blomquist being the one two next season. Or if, 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 if that bold vest is off. Maybe a new name in Blomquist next season. I don't think Blomquist is ready to be a starter quite yet. I think mm -hmm. there's still a little bit of growth that needs to happen there. Uh, but I could see him easily starting next season as a backup with maybe it's Nadelkovic as the starter. Maybe it's Jari as a starter. Maybe there's a third name that we don't know of yet. Again, a ton of change is going to happen again this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wouldn't be surprising to see it happen between the pipes yet again. Like I said, I just don't think... Blomquist is set to be a starter yet, but I could see one of those situations where uh, he's stealing the show by the end of the season. Even mm -hmm. you want to know to close out this show, you want to mm -hmm. know what chaos theory is now? Oh boy. Chaos theory. The penguins obviously need more assets and cap space is one of those assets to help fix this horrendous defense. Jari's $5 million is, is a lot of asset. Yeah. It's a lot of cap space. Penguins start next season with Mark Andre Fleury and Yul Blomqvist, the flower <laughs> and the Bloma. That's chaos theory right there, and that is what we will leave you with for this episode of the Tip of the Iceberg. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. The Penguins take on the New Jersey Devils tonight to continue their gauntlet of a final month. Uh, we didn't get to that, but just look at their schedule, and you'll know exactly what we were about to say. But that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you hopefully later today around 4 o'clock live on Inside the Penguins on YouTube. But if I don't, we will see you guys next time.